everybody and welcome back to the Sideline Night podcast. We're, you're very welcome to our review show and we're looking back at the four senior championship quarterfinals. Fortunately, there's just so many games to cover. We're just going to give the, the intermediate a miss. But of course, there's the draw between Tones and the Oaks coming up on Saturday. The replays on Saturday. So maybe we'll cover it in our preview show and get talking a bit about the intermediate championship as well on that show. I'm delighted to be joined by Mark Fide and he's going to help us go through all the four senior championship quarterfinals. Starting off with Bally McNabb and Madden on Friday night, Mark. Um, uh, and as usual, I'm going to let you take over and talk about this. But I suppose from Bally McNabb's perspective, just very disappointing evening. Um, didn't really show up in the first half, only scored a point in the first half and really left us too much to do in the second half. And had a good goal chance at the start of the second half and a great save by Jamie Sheridan and Madden. They were deserved winners on the night. They were, they were indeed. Um. As you say, I'm very surprised at the Bally McNall performance, especially after uh, the performances they put in in the in the in the group stages and, and then they get through into the quarterfinal. Um, we were expecting more of them. I, I I totally thought that they would have had enough to get to get over over the line and beat Madden, but uh, Madden have improved steadily the whole way through through the championship. Um, even um. From the, the the league game, the league decider, you know every game that just seemed to have 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 got better every match, and I was very impressed by them on Friday night, you know. And the big big thing for Madden was was that who sort of the quarter final that they couldn't get through, couldn't win a quarter final game, they couldn't get over a big team, and that that's going to give them massive confidence of getting over Bally McNabb. So they really focused in on that, and you could see that focus was there on Friday night to 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 get the big win, to beat one of the big teams because. Of the performances Bally McNabb had put in, people were starting to talk them up, and myself included, that there were there was a real possibility that this could be a year that they might have a chance of going and winning the championship. So Madden really honed in on that and, and decided, right, this is this is the big one that we, we need to win this. And you could just see the focus was there, and uh, they were very impressed by them. And of course, now Drimley coming back in was a massive boost to them. Um, and that, that'll do him the world of good now that they went through. Sitting all sixty minutes under his belt, and uh, yeah, no Madden, Madden's, Madden's in a good place now. And we know the the semi finals are obviously marked to take on Cross McGlen in the semi final. Um, from a Madden perspective, we don't want to start previewing that game. Obviously, we'll do that in two weeks' time. But from a Madden perspective, is the pressure sort of off now? As you said, they've got over that quarter final hurdle that was such a struggle there for for this team. They're taking on Cross McGlen. They'll be they'll be underdogs heading into it. Is the pressure off now? Can they sort of well, go into this optimistic? Yeah. Well, the pressure is off to a certain degree, but I would like to think that the pressure they'll put on within themselves. I would hope that, you know, yes, they beat Bally McNabb, but now Madden want to go on. Madden was challenging to win the league. They have been challenged to win the league. They're always there or thereabouts. Just can't get over that sort of big game. So the pressure has to come within that, you know, they can't be happy with just beating Bally McNabb. They've got to now go out. And put in a real big performance in. I'm, I'm constant, and they have sort of backed up their performances so far in every game. And I would hope that against Cross, that's that's the way they'll be going into that game. You know, when you look at now Grimley, you know he's a player who you expect to dominate around the middle. Defensively, they're very sound, and and going up front, uh, you know the, the two or three real real classy players, Rafferty, Connor Grimley, and in Connor Grimley, he's another player. Who, if, if Madden get the ball in there, there's no reason why he won't do enough damage against the cross. Um, so no, Madden, the pressure's slightly off them, slightly off them, but I would like to think that th- that bit of pressure and that, that they'll they'll be putting it on themselves to say, no, why can't we go on now and, 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 and beat cross and get that championship final? And their defence market's so strong, isn't it? They're such a great team defence and such a great effort. Like, the whole ball can have six points is superb going on, I suppose. Not only their defence, but the way when they turn the ball over the break at such pace as well. Like they're they're going to be yeah. harmful for uh, for anybody. Their transition is unreal and how they get the so many that their fitness levels, their conditioning is, is top notch. You know, once they're they're getting men behind the ball, they're getting like Rui Rugan, you know, had a they had men every time he, he moved, there was someone right on him and uh, putting serious pressure on him. Jack was the same, got no change out of his man. Um I was really impressed by that, but it was as you say, it was the speed of when 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 they broke when they broke when they had done the turnovers against Bally McNabb. It was the speed of getting the ball up the field and getting into the position for the scores. 
And that, that's down to a lot of work that's went on over the last couple of years, not just in fitness levels, but in organizing the the, 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 the transition from defense to attack. You know, and that's something that we've been really impressed by. And in fact, that was the one disappointment that I've already spoke about with Madden in the night that Clowner played them in, in the league in the league game. You didn't see that that night. They just didn't seem to physically they didn't seem to be a match for Clowner, but on the Friday night, they were more than a match for Bally McNabb and, and the amount of turnovers and, and the, maybe the flag ground shoot them as well, maybe the pitch opening up a bit. But uh yeah, that, that was that was very impressive as well. <clears throat> they play cross McGlenn in the semi final cross, obviously just about still in the championship, Mark. I don't think anybody's seen this coming. I know myself and Philly definitely on last week's preview show didn't predict this. We thought Cross would have much too much for the Harps. And I suppose fair play to the Harps, the, they got the two goals. They got um, index time with a, whatever a minute left. They were a point up and looked like winning it. Cross got two points, but the Harps come back and got a, a leveller. It was, it, I don't think anybody's seen that sort of game coming. I definitely didn't see it coming. I I had them rode off big time. Um, what the performances were seen in the group stages, and even even against St. Peter's, you know, I wasn't overly impressed by the Harps. And the cross were just coming along nicely. A couple of good games and a couple of heavy heavy wins as well. Um, and really the Harps totally left that game behind them. When when they were a point up, you know, it was all about just. Getting possessing the ball, keeping possessing, maybe some man going down, just trying to, to drag out them last couple of minutes. But throughout the game, really just impressed how the, the bang ball into the full forward line put the cross under serious pressure. Um, just all over the field. And, uh, basically, the cross completely got out of jail. Um, I think Harps, if they would have went on and won the game, they would have been well deserved winners of the of the match. Um, uh, impressed McShane again, very impressive. Uh, McElroy, good game, and just just basically all Grimley, all good solid performances, and they were well on top for most of that game. And the intensity that brought the the game, it was it was it was fantastic. And as you said, I just didn't know, you know, where where did where did that come from? Like in a way, was that not there all year? Um, so they'll, they'll take something out of it, I'm sure, that the fact that they should have, but end of the day. They didn't get over the line, and uh, that's 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 what it's all about. And the cross are into the quarter final. Another another one of these matches where the cross should have been beat, but they weren't. You know, it happens too often, doesn't it? Mark? Yeah, yeah, it does. Every every club nearly has a story of the the pulled cross right to the the bitter end, but cross just, just see it out. Just see it out. And the one thing that I would take from the cross was, in that whenever they were a point down, the work rate and the intensity of their tackling. The Harps had the ball, had possession the ball, and they were not giving up. They were the, the fought tooth and nail to get that ball back, to get themselves into position. And maybe the difference between the two teams, whenever they, whenever they won that ball back, like Soren Kiernan, Ocean O'Neill, these guys getting on to the ball, making sure that they weren't going to have a wasteful shot or kick a ball day or wide or into the keeper's hands. They waited and they waited till that right moment came to get the man, the, the ball to the man was going to stick the ball over the bar and that got them the leveller. And then unfortunately for, for the Harps, it's a bad kick out by the, by the keeper to get the cross the point. But then they showed the fight to get back up the field and a bit of pressure on McElroy and he stuck the ball over the bar for the, for the for, I think it was McElroy for the free. And um, that showed a lot of character by the Harps, you know. But uh, but I was that's what really impressed me with the cross, and that's something that always impresses you with the cross. That fight, that will to win the ball, and and they were really, really. I was I was the one bit that really impressed me about the cross was that sort of five minute period where they just they were not giving that game up, you know. I suppose the that was impre- an impressive aspect of their game, Mark. But a worrying one, and I think we've spoke about it before the last couple of years is is this long ball into the square on the full back line. Um, slash goalkeeper. Um, I suppose that they do have a young full back line. I know the likes of Thomas O'Duffy, Owen McKeown, and, and players like that are all in there, but the two harp schools just simply weren't dealt with long balls into the square, and that's going to be a worry for Anthony Cunningham going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Thomas O'Duffy, he'll be he'll be um he'll be out the next game. I think he got a straight red. Maybe maybe, maybe yeah, black and red. I'm not sure what way. I think it was he, a black and a yellow, I think. Oh, well, then he'll be Thompson okay. Thought. He 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 gives him something, but yeah, that the, the fullback line is is definitely suspect. And and you know the goal that the Harps man slipped in behind the the fullback line, and they all stood waiting. 
you know, the whole cross full back line, the goalkeeper, everyone stood waiting and Horseman just slipped in and palmed the ball in the net. So that, that that's a worrying, and that's worrying for the cross, but it's also something that all the other teams, Madden especially, will be looking at saying, this is what we need to get at them. You know, you don't want to be out around the middle, you know, fisting balls about and, and trying to keep his ass because that's where cross will hunt you down. They'll get they'll get the turnovers and, and move the ball at pace. But if you can get that ball into that that full back line that of cross, then you're you're gonna you're gonna cause them, them serious problems. They're really, what they need at the moment is they need a, a Francie Valley or someone to come out of retirement, and you know they're just missing that sort of presence in there. Um, they're young, they're they're very young in the full back line, but they, they would just need someone with a bit of stature there just to, to go back in there and, and 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 close that up. But they just maybe don't have that player at the moment, and uh, you know that's something that I, I'd like to think Madden Madden will surely be getting up in the in the semi final. And then the other semi final is going to be all Lurgan clash of clans and clan iron. But again, Mark, we're not getting into that. We'll we'll do that next week. Um, but clans, good great win over Clevey on Sunday. That was the, the first of a double header. Really, really impressive stuff. You now the wind and the rain and the weather and everything just it didn't open itself to um a, an open game of football. But clans, they were full value for their victory. They were seven points up at half time, seven nil here, Clevey scoreless. And come out and Sean Mackle's goal in the, in the second half really put the game to bed because it was just such a, an uphill battle for Clevey then. But I suppose how impressed were you with the clans in that first game, Mark? I was I was really impressed by by, by Clan uh, on Sunday. Um, you know it was it was something that I was looking at with them was it was very similar the way they played against the cross. There was a real meaning to everything they done, every challenge they went for, every time. You know, every turnover they made and you get shit and every time they turned the ball over they were in Kalibi's faces they were letting them know that they turned the ball over and then when they moved it once they'd done the turnovers they moved the ball at pace and uh, the clans are are really moving along nicely here um we talked about the cross game way back about you know can can they can they repeat it again and they did for periods against the source fields and, and, and against the uh, Mullabon and then they moved in, and it was a terrible game against Drummond T. But they were back to where they were against the cross. That unbelievable uh, work rate, um, being smart on the ball, and yeah, you can only be impressed by how how they performed, uh, against Kalibi. It really was a a real good solid performance. I suppose that the Kalibi um playing with the clans playing with the wind, sorry, gave them a good sort of foothold in the game in the first half, but. Clevey were reduced to 14 men as well, um, Mark, so that they lost Cahill Boyland, a red card, they lost Lee Rice to a, a wrist injury <laughs> just literally at the same time. So it was just such a, a, a poor day from Clevey all round, really. But really, that, that, yeah, Boylan, you know, after he, he had performed, you know, against Bally McNabb and stuff, he, he was a big player and um, to lose him so early on was massive. Rice as well has been a big player for them all along. Um, but even at that stage, you know, I think clans were three 0 up at that stage, and just looking at the game, he still could, and 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 also the clans had had the the elements with them as well. You know, the wind was on their back, but you just seen the hunger in Clan of Yale. You seen how much they wanted it, and and Kalibi were to me players ways they were found wanting. You know, they really were when it came to balls breaking balls. Clans were diving on it. They just showed how much they they meant them to win that. Um, and and I was you were very disappointed now in in, in Kalibi's performance. But yeah, who knows if Boylan would have stayed on the field, if Rice would have stayed on the field, who knows? And the second half they would have kept it a bit closer, and you know the wind on their backs it may have been a bit different. But just by watching the the, the two teams in them first 15, 20 minutes, it it just looked like it was always going to go one way. You know, the clans just really. Really had their number, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of lot of I'm sure a lot of players will, will need to sort of look at themselves and you know when it comes to these big games for Kalibi, they just don't seem to be getting over the line, and uh, that that would be disappointing from a Kalibi point of view. I suppose for clans, Mark the big man all stood up like Supi was superb. I think he got four or five points, and I think Shane McCorn really stood out because he didn't have his influence on the scoreboard just. Quite as much as he had throughout the championship, but his work rate is uh, in around the middle of the field on kickouts, his tackling ability, 
Like you, you talk about that work rate that Shane McCarnan just he emphasized that, didn't he, for clowns? He's the leader. He he's the man. He, he's he's just got them all on his back and he's he's he is carrying every one of them and he's pushing them along and, and all the all players are responding around him. Um, you know, young McConnell in, in, in defense, I've been really impressed by him. He is in he was in Kalibi's faces from the start. Um Brady at Santa Half back. Um Damon O'Hagan's there. You know, these guys are, are are all performing, but it's on the back of how well Shane McBarton's man, how he is just driving this thing on. Um and you know, he, he is a, just a top, top player. So he is, and he, he seems to be getting better in every match. And as you say, you never get the scores that he, that he got um, throughout the championship, but it was probably his best performance to date. He, he was he was immense. He was just, and, and we had already spoke about how good the Kalevi midfield and in round that sort of middle eight, how good they have all been for Kalevi. Clans completely won it all day long. I know we spoke about Boylan not being there, but but I don't think it would have mattered because he he's on top of his game. And just on suit, um, I thought it wasn't the points that, that, that Stefan got, and he, he did get some really good scores. But it was it was, his, it was how intelligent he was when he when the game you know got in the second half, he got on the ball, how smart he was. He, he used everything so wisely, and you could hear him talking to all the players. You could just hear him constantly telling people where to go. You know. And, and wanting the ball whenever there was a wee bit of danger, he was a man. He was the outlet, you know, and, and then driving forward at Kalibi's defense as well. And also, uh, you have to look at there's a couple other players in the in the clans are Nell Henderson, the centre half forward. You know, he's going about his business. He, he's very very smart footballer, and you could see that last night. He just drifts off and he, he picks up them few loose balls. And if the man's running off his shoulder, he'll give it. If it's a 20, 30 yard kick pass, is needed. He, you know, so the clans are uh, in a very in a very good place. And to be honest, I was just saying this to somebody earlier. They look very much like the clan earned of two years ago. Um, uh, you know, like people, uh, maybe they're a year away, and I, I would have been one of them people. They're a couple of years away from really challenging to, to win the championship and all. But um, I think they have proved just uh, that um, they are more than ready to, to, to go on and, and try and win the championship. You know. And as we said, they, they take on Clonarn, so that's in, in two weeks' time. And um, Clonarn they beat Silverbridge in the final quarter final um on Sunday afternoon. I know you're on co commentary for this one, Mark. Um the first half was pretty uneventful <laughs> to to talk about, I'm sure, on commentary. There definitely wasn't much to write about. Second half opened up a wee bit, and I suppose the goals were were the big thing for Clonarn in the first half. I think it was Daniel McGee got it and then Turbo got a punch goal in the second half and that was pretty much the difference in the end. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll put the first half down to conditions. So we'll just blame conditions on that. Uh, I think the first half, both teams were just, you know, sort of canceling each other out, seeing what was going on, who was going to play where and trying to mark, you know, it was just, it was a cagey affair in the first first half and that sometimes that just happens, especially with conditions, nobody wanted to maybe take too many risks and, uh, you know, when I look back on it, Clan Arm was playing against them in the first half, so maybe it was a smart, smart way of, of going about it and as you said, opened up in the second half and Clan Arm kicked on. Um, you know, at the end of the day, Clan Arm, I was coming away from last night thinking, oh, we didn't play well, this didn't, you know, but it was a quarter final. Bad conditions, Clonard still came away with a seven point victory. You know, that's you have to be fairly happy with that as well. I know Rui, being Rui, he 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 will look at it and he'll 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 see different aspects of where we, we need to be better and 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 improve and stuff like that. But you know, at the same time, you've got to look at it and say, you know, seven point win against a, a good Silverbridge team, a good attacking Silverbridge team with a lot of really good forwards who Clonard you know, kept them all fairly quiet. Um, so you'd have to be impressed with with the you know with with the seven point victory, but at the same time we know it probably won't be enough going into a semi final against the clans. It's going to bring on a whole different uh, game altogether. But um, but uh, but you have to be you know, Connor's been going along. They've been winning by five, six, seven, eight points, and as we speak about you know, talk about um. Maybe they haven't been challenged yet. They haven't been this, but 
you know, you, you can we can only do what you have to do. You've got to go out and beat the team in front of you. And if you're winning by five, six, seven points most matches, you know, you have to be you have to be fairly happy with that as well, you know. I think a big thing for Clan Iron is their benchmark that, you know, coming in with Aidan McConville coming in and got two points, Ryan um Ryan Meehan come on and got two points, the likes of Michal O'Shea come in and I know he's um he's a, a young player that has a lot of potential and there's a lot of hope for him in, in Clan Iron. You have the likes of Ryan Owens didn't feature, you know, there, there's players on that bench that, you know, they would get into a lot of senior teams, starting teams. Yeah, yeah, there was no question. But I think uh, Michal was maybe kind of slight not going into the game, probably, you know, looking maybe further down the line. Um, he came on, he still came on there and he, he, he impressed a couple of good uh, sort of challenges he made. Um, but I think Ryan Mahan was, was a, he came in and he went the, when Stacey came into the game, he had a real injection of pace and intensity in, in the clan iron and it was just a wee bit something different for us in, in the game. Uh, I thought he really impressed Aiden will do what he does Aiden will come on and uh, or if he starts Aiden will always chip in with a couple of scores and that's a real help to, to, to take the pressure off Turbo um, so yeah the squad has been and we've spoke about this the squad has been massive all year you know there's two or three people started there last night that didn't start in the, in the previous game um, and it'll probably be the same again in the semi-final they're, they're fighting like mad for places the training sessions are Really, really intense, and that's where where Rui, I'm sure he's he's picking the team in that there. So it'll be going to train this week again, and it'll be it'll be a fresh start. Yes, you know, there's ten to twelve boys that will be starting the next day. You know, your main players that you have, but there's four or five spots there that are just up for grabs, and uh, and that not only adds the better training sessions and more intensity in the training sessions. So that's something that Rui will be really happy with. Um. And, and as I was saying, you know, um, he hadn't also Jack Holland came on last night and, and chipped in with score. And Turbo scored, I think, 1 1. You know, so yeah. there was a range of scores. There, there was seven, I think, different scores. Danny McGee chipped in with 1 2. So that again, that's that's a that's a that takes a bit of pressure off Turbo. It also, you know, teams come and looking at it, they just it's more than Turbo that you need to stop, you know. So it was that, that was a real impressive uh, yeah. thing last night that we had. Seven or eight different scores, you know, that, that was impressive as well. So, yeah, we, we know our semi final draw now, as we mentioned, it's Madden against Cross McGlenn and Clans kicking on Clan Iron. So, them games will be played in two weeks' time, along with intermediate semi finals. Um, the junior semi finals are coming up this weekend, so we'll be back on Thursday and we'll look at them and we'll kick a look at the Oaks and both Tones replay as well in the intermediate championship. Um, thanks to Capture Athletic for coming on board as our official podcast sponsor for the duration of the championship. Thanks to Kieran Lynch, who spoke to Anthony Cunningham, the Cross McGlenn manager, after their uh, three-point win over the Harps, and we'll hear from him now. But uh, Mark, cheers for coming on, and thanks for giving us your thoughts. No problem, Sean. Thank you. Anthony, it was certainly a tough battle. Uh, it took, obviously, extra time to get over the line. And How do you sort of reflect on, on the win? Yeah, yeah, a real, a real honest, tough game. I, we knew it coming in, typical cross friggin' Harps game, you know, just big men, and we had a bat let out. And uh, fair play to the Harps, they stuck with it. They had a purple patch uh, at the start, at the end of the first half uh, that really caught us. To be honest, probably two slack goals, and here. Yeah. It's championship football and majors win games and they get the two of them. Uh, we had a chance down this end in the first half as well, young Oren Cairn. You know, if we, if we had to get that, we would have probably pushed on, in our opinion. But uh, here, glad to get over the lane. Probably the winning of the game came in the first half of extra time. You got the three points, two from Ashton O'Neill, one from Rain. Do you agree with that? Do you feel like that was important to, to take the initiative, if you like, in extra yeah, time? Yeah, we knew, we knew, and that's what we had asked for after the game. The, the first 10 minutes was to really go for it, yeah, get those two or three points up, and, and then see where, see where it took us. And that's what we done. Luckily, that's what we got. And, uh, yeah, and then it was a case of just managing the game after that. Right? Yeah, and of course, the second half then was about defending your own box. I feel like there's a lot of high balls coming in, but of course, you, you yeah. dealt with it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, it was the right thing to do from the Harps to put the ball in. They got two, two goals. 
was hey, already and putting the hay ball into the box was the correct thing to do. But we managed it properly, and that's yeah. what we're talking about our players all year is about managing games out. You know, we don't always have to be chasing and chasing, and, and that's what we felt that we don't today. We managed the game. Out. You feel that maybe in a normal time you see chances there to, to win the game and it just was caught in decision a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And listen, boys, it is. It's majors win games. Goals wins game and championships. Like, you know, it's a simple thing, but you score a goal, they have to get four. You know, and, and we miss their goal chance, you know. And I always say to the boys, in championship football, you get one or two clean goal chances. We definitely had one and we didn't take it. So after that, then we're just chasing and chasing. It's more to come, is it? Well, uh, yeah, sorry, I said to the boys, I, I knew like if we were going to win this championship, we, we have three games to win it. And I said to the boys, there's going to be one of these three games that we had to eke out. And this was the one that we eked out tonight. Listen, to be fair, this game should have been an arm in my opinion. Yeah, we should have been playing down in the county ground. It wasn't. This pitch probably doesn't lend itself to an open type game. And uh, we had to adapt to that. But hey, we're over the line and we look forward to it.